Hello, my name is Jorge Sanchez from Argentina. I'm glad to present our work, Trading Off Information Modalities in Zero Shot Classification. This is a joint work with Matias Molina from Universidad Nacional de Córdoba and CONICET. In Zero Shot Classification, we are given labeled samples from a set of known categories and we are asked to learn a model that's able to make predictions about object classes not seen during training. In this case, we need to resort on additional sources of information that allow us to overcome the lack of annotations for the target categories. To deal with this lack of annotations, a popular approach is to encode both images and concepts using suitable representation spaces and to define a compatibility score between elements from these spaces. In this way, from any given image, we can choose the most compatible class among those available during testing. Different from the fully supervised case, where the knowledge about target categories is provided by the class labels, in the zero-shot setting, this knowledge is encoded by means of a representation space that is different from the one chosen to encode the images. The interplay between these two views of the same abstract concepts needs to be coordinated to be useful. However, different problems might require different trade-offs in terms of the information provided by these views. For instance, visual cues might be more relevant in discriminating fine-grained details while semantic relations might help extrapolate to a different set of object classes. Given vectorial representations of images and concepts, a popular approach is to define a compatibility score as a simple bilinear form. Given the symmetry of the bilinear operator, we can think of it as a two-step process in which we first project one of the modalities into the space of the other and then compute the similarity score on it. In this case, the projection step corresponds to the product by W or W transpose and the similarity computation step to a simple dot product. The quality on, on the right hand side of the last equation follows from the linearity of the dot product and the projection by W. Replacing either of these steps by a nonlinear operator breaks the symmetry and makes the similarities defined on, each vis, uh, on the visual and semantic spaces to behave differently. In our work, we consider the case of replacing the dot product by a cosine similarity denoted by a double bracket operator in the figure. The projection step in this case corresponds to the multiplication by W and a normalization on the unit sphere. To learn the matrix W, we propose two different formulations. The first one considers uh, the convex combination of these scores computed independently on each space. Here, the factor beta controls the trades off between similarities in the visual and semantic domains. We define a softmax posterior with a trainable scaling parameter tau and learn the matrix W under a maximum likelihood criteria. For the second formulation, we first define conditional PDFs on each space and consider as a scoring function the point-wise maximum. Based on an upper bound on the zero likelihood induced by G, we derive a loss function that corresponds to the complex combination of the losses defined independently on each space. We run experiments on six datasets of different granularities and followed the standard protocol proposed by Xiang et al. Uh, we consider both the zero shot and generalized zero shot settings. First, we study the effect of the trade off parameter beta. We observe that the optimal value is dependent on the task, with a general preference toward the visual modality, especially in cases of fine-grained data. Interestingly, we found the optimal value of this parameter to be consistent between our two formulations, indicating that the optimal value uh, is related more to the problem and feature spaces than to the particularities of the learning algorithm. Next, we compare our approach with three groups of methods from the literature. The first group corresponds to methods based on simple bilinear forms, the second to more recent and rather complex formulations, and the third to methods based on generative modeling. Note that, in the latter case, the set of test categories is assumed to be known during training. We observe that our formulation based on simple bilinear model outperforms all other models of the same type, showing competitive results compared to other more recent and complex formulations. Adding a feature generation step, as in the later group, greatly improved performance. Similar observations can be made in the generalized search of case, where we evaluate our uh, on instances from both training and testing categories. If we consider the harmonic mean, our model performs better than the models in group 1 and 2 and achieved competitive performance on those in the third group after adding a feature generation step. Thank you for listening. If you want to know more about our work, I'll be happy to answer any question during the poster session.